We've come on down now to Bakewell to visit the fantastic long distance racing offs of Eric Fox, one of the top Derbyshire fanciers. Before visiting these lofts, you need to take a mountaineering course. They're all set in the Derbyshire hillside. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Good morning, Eric. Morning. I'm afraid I've caught a cold in your Derbyshire weather. It's starting to rain again. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long have you been in the fancy? Since 1935. Yeah, and what sort of distances do you like to race? The longer ones? Over the last 30 years I've, I've not bothered with England, I've just bothered with the long races. Yeah. Against the whole country. Yeah, you've got an outstanding record in the National Flying Club. How many times have you won first section? Seven times. F uh, four at Bow, three at Nantes. Yeah, how far did you fly from Poe? 683. It's an incredible performance. Yeah. Can you remember one or two of your best open positions? Yes, uh, fifth open. <laughs> 7th Open, 15th Open, 46th Open. Oh, first class, mate, congratulations. Plus a lot more. Plus a lot more. Yeah, it's Seconds, wonderful. Third room, yeah. like. What system do you race on? Do you race natural or widowed? All natural. Yeah. yeah. What All do you prefer, hens or cocks? Either. I sent five cocks to Paul and, uh, and timed three in. I sent three hens to Paul and uh, timed two in and, and left the other one next day again. Yeah. I must say, your loft's a wonderful set in here. It's an old quarry, isn't it? Yes, an old quarry, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. It's hard work for you walking up here each day. Oh, it's getting bad now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice checker, anyway. What's this one? Yeah, it's a granddaughter of the old red, that is, uh, of the for, uh, 46 open four cock. She's, uh, where are we? You won a lot of good positions in the national, aren't you, this one? Yeah, she's won at uh, second section Bordeaux. Fifth section Bergerac, Midland National. Eleventh section Nantes National. Of course, it's a class pigeon, that one. All velocities under 1020. This is Eric's main racing loft. All his first seven section winners are clocked to this loft. And all the birds are trapped through open holes on them nice big trap boards. This is the fantastic view from Eric's racing loft. Just imagine them birds coming home from Poe through there. Incredible. What a place. This is the view inside the main racing loft. Although Eric uses the old widow and nest box fronts, the old pigeons are raced on natural. The long distance in mind. The loft is lovely and clean. The birds are lovely. Fresh air and plenty of space. It's a wonderful old loft. When did you pay your pigeons up then, Eric? Round about last week in February or first or second week in March. Yeah, and so you race all natural? All natural, yes. yes. How about training your pigeons? When do you start training? How far do you train the I, birds? I don't train the old birds until the third or fourth race in the club. Yeah. And then I put them on. Yeah. About 140 miles. Yeah. How about feeding the pigeons? What do you feed them on? Well, I feed uh, a mix you like. Uh, very strong protein mixture. Yeah. And then before the long races, I add more beans. Yeah. How about your babies? What do you feed your babies on? I feed them on a super junior mixture. Yeah. Just for the for the start, and then when they get going, 
on the other stuff, like, you know, better stuff. Yeah. This is a nice blue cock. Eric, what's this one? Yes, he's out of the seventh open hen at ball and 15th open cock at ball. He's bred with, he's never been in a basket in his life until today, and he's bred winners with any hen I've, bet, I've had him paired to. Yeah, he's a class looking pigeon. He's bred winners right through to Paul. Been very good. Bergerac, Bordeaux, very good pigeon. That's a nice looking cock. Eric, what's that one? Yeah, now this pigeon, the same way bred as the blue cock there, from the seventh open hen and 15th open cock. He's bred winners at Bergerac, Bordeaux, Paul. He's bred winners all along the line. Angeline. He's never been in a basket, this pigeon. This is the first time he's been in one. Yeah, he's a class pigeon. Love bred winners it. with different hens. Any hen he's been paired to, he breeds winners. Small yeah. pigeon. Yeah. Nothing about him at all. When picking out breeders, Eric, how do you select your breeders then? On their breeding or their race performances or what? Well, uh, well the sons and daughters of the best pigeons, like, I, uh, I try them first. Yeah, do you uh, select late breeds and things like that? Yes, uh, yeah. th this cock were a late bred when he, when he were hatched. Yeah, you late find bread. they could stop birds? Yes. Uh, what, fam small. what families of pigeons do you keep? Well, the Delmont, Ancine and Osman. Yeah. Good old families. Yes, family. These are Eric's stock lofts. I think we'll have a run down and look in there. These are a few Eric's stock birds. He's got about 15 pairs of stock birds. He pairs them up in March. These lofts have got so much character. Good old fashioned lofts. The quality pigeons. This is a nice dark checker, and uh, Eric, uh, yeah. is this uh, one of the many positions? Yes, it's one uh, four section positions plus second section, seventh open, Berger rack on the Midland National Smash. Mm -hmm. It's breadwinners. Uh, it's a pure Albert Benix, that. Yeah. How many babies you'd breed each year then, Eric? Well, I breed about 60 altogether, even off the stock birds and races, and I sell half them. Yeah. Each year. First and second round, like, I sell half of them. Yeah, how far do you race your babies? Is I train the young ones. I don't race them at all. I haven't raced young birds for 14 years now. No. I just train them 50 miles about, you know, around about 30 times and yeah. leave them then. Yeah, then you bring them out as yearlings? As yearlings, they can fly the channel, uh, uh, and as two-year-olds, they fly 500 mod mile. Yeah. On the day. That's terrific. Uh, I suppose by saving them as babies, give them a chance to mature. Yes, they, I think they're stronger, like you and the, you know. A lot stronger pigeons at the back end of the year, like it seemed to be. Yeah, I think they have a longer life. Yes. Aye. What a fantastic red checker cock this is, Eric. What's this one? Yeah, he's one of the top breeders now, like. He won first section, 46th open at Bow, second section, 7th open Angeline with the Midland National on a smash. At Bow, he was 10 hours, 10 minutes in front of the next pigeon in the section. He's bred winners direct like off him is also nearly filled them off full of winners for Incredible. us. It's such a wonderful for looking other people out, uh, all over the country. Yeah. He's had them. His parents were good racers too, weren't they? His pe uh, the hen, the mother to him, was uh, third section poor on a early liberation. The following year, she was second section poor on a late liberation, only beaten for first section by the seventh open hen. Wonderful, mate. What a family of pigeons. What do you think about the sport in general at the moment, Eric? Well, I think now it's getting too costly for young men to, to 
to start up with pigeons. The price of clocks, baskets and pigeons as well. Yeah. Uh, it's too much. Mm. It's wonderful living here, but you've got a bit of a hook problem, haven't you? Yes, I've uh, uh, up to now 17 in just over two years. That's Killed. incredible. Yes, That's terrible. Some very good pigeons and all among them. Yeah, they don't discriminate, do they? They eat, they eat the good ones, eat the bad ones. Yeah, poor pigeons and all, there you go. That's incredible, mate. Yeah. Anyway, Eric, thanks very much for having me around today, mate. I've really, really enjoyed my visit.